Hi friends! If you are like me and you sometimes get absolutely fascinated with a patterned paper pad but you don't know what to do with it, then I think this tutorial is for you, because today I'm going to make a DIY notebook. It's great for journaling as well as for putting pictures in, and it's a great gift for both crafters and people who are not crafting. I have decided to make my notebook the same size as Midori Traveler's notebooks, because I like this product and that's what I'm using for my notes. Those notebooks can be inserted in the cover, and this is why they are also called Traveler's Notebook Inserts. The paper pad I'm using today is by a Polish producer, UHK Gallery, and it's obviously Oriental-inspired and has some beautiful subdued blues and greens in it. I have chosen a few papers from the pad and I'm going to trim them down to 8 and a quarter by 8 and a half inches. I'm only going to need three papers to create the notebook. Here you can see that it's exactly the same size and eight and a half inches wide and eight and a quarter tall. And here are the three papers that I have chosen. My notebook is not going to be entirely made of patterned paper. I'm also going to add some papers that have fun textures. So here I have trimmed down a piece of parchment and this is a non-woven material that is called Lutradur. As always, all the tools and supplies I'm using will be listed in the description box down below, as well as on my blog. I'm also planning to add a couple of shaker pages to my notebook. To create a shaker page, I'm going to need a plastic page protector. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm going to trim down this spine. Then I'm going to flip over the page and trim it down to eight and a half inches, which is the width of my notebook. And now I have a pocket that is open on one side, that is the top side, and it's uh, fused on the rest three sides. The next step is very simple. I'm just going to take all my papers and score them right in half at um, four and a quarter in inch mark. For the patterned papers I used the scoring board, but uh, for thinner materials I'm just going to do it the traditional way, that is aligning the corners and pressing down the fold. Then I'm going to insert the papers one into the other to see what my notebook is going to look like. And at this point I have discovered that the plastic page is going to be actually a bit longer than my notebook, so I have to make it a bit shorter. I'm using a fuse tool for working with this plastic, but you can also use a sewing machine if you have one. So I'm going to create a line with a fuse tool at about 3 8 of an inch from the edge. And by the way, this page protector was meant for A4 size papers. Now I'm trimming down uh, the plastic very close to that stitched line. And here I have my pocket that is now a bit shorter. I'm also folding it in half and pressing down the fold. I have also decided to fuse uh, this pocket along this central fold, although I don't think it's necessary. So now I have a page with two pockets open at the top. Before I bind my notebook, I'm going to show you how I decorated each and every page of it. So I have decided to start with the heat embossing and I'm going to use the beautiful stamp set called Sea Life. This is by Tim Holtz and Stampers Anonymous. I'm going to stamp this large octopus image first and I'm applying some Versamark ink onto the stamp and I'm going to use silver embossing powder on the blue page. The papers I'm using are quite thick, they are 200 grams 
and uh, this is why they don't warp just as much. They are very good for heat embossing, actually. The next image I'm going to stamp is going to be the lobster. And again, I'm uh, stamping it at the bottom of the next page. Since I'm using one patterned paper pad and one stamp set throughout the notebook, I can create a cohesive look, but at the same time each and every page is going to be a bit different. On the navy blue page I'm going to use this crab image, and again I'm using the same silver embossing powder by WOW. The last heat embossed image is going to be this seahorse. You have probably noticed that the navy blue page has the branding strip at the bottom with the name of the paper pad on it, so I'm going to cover it up using a washi tape. And since washi tapes are normally low-tech, I have also added some liquid adhesive. So this single piece of paper is going to make four pages for the notebook. And now I'm going to do some stamping on the parchment paper. Since I'm using a thin parchment paper, I don't want my ink to show through, and this is why I have chosen to use a very light shade of ink. The one I'm using is called Iceberg, and it's by Altenew. And the stamp is also by Tim Holtz. The set is called Composition and Lined. You can expand uh, the lines to the bottom of the page if you want to, but instead I have decided to decorate the bottom of the page with another fish image from the same Sea Life set. Then I have masked it off and added a seaweed image as well. This stamping is going to look even lighter when ink dries completely. The stamping I'm going to add to the other side of this page is going to be a little bit different. This time I'm going to use this large background stamp by Simon Says Stamp. This is uh, Scalloped Waves and I'm using the same ink, which is Iceberg. I'm using the grid on the mat to measure 3 inches from the bottom of the page, and uh, this way I'm going to cover up only 3 inches with the stamping. Then I'm going to flip the page over and repeat the same process on the other edge of the paper. That's a very simple composition, and uh, it's great in case you want to add some journaling in the middle of the page. Creating those notebooks is a very satisfying process, because as you can see, you can use pretty much any supplies that you have. It's a great opportunity to rummage through your supplies and uh, find the ones that could work together. These pages are going to be the center of my notebook, and uh, the only decoration I'm going to add to them is that uh, washi tape that I'm going to attach at the top edge as well as at the bottom. It has some wave pattern on it, also oriental inspired, so I think it will go fine with the rest of the notebook. The pattern paper pad has uh, one page with a number of framed images, and I have decided to use that uh, carp fish for my notebook, so I'm just um, using my uh, craft knife to cut it out. Then I'm going to use my paper distressor tool to go all over the edges of this card. This is going to create the look of a handmade paper that is going to add to that oriental feel of my project. There are some sentiment strips that are also a part of uh, the patterned paper pad, and now I'm going to use my trimmer and uh, separate them. I'm going to use all the navy blue ones on the project. 
I'm uh, trimming them apart where necessary and then just like uh, with the card I'm going to use the paper distressor and uh, distress each and every strip of paper this way. If you don't have a paper distressor you can open up your scissors and use uh, the edge of the blade to create the same effect. I'm going to attach the word inspiration onto the carp card using the liquid glue and on the other side of the card I'm going to attach the perfect imperfection. To embellish the other side of the card I'm going to use some clear iridescent sequins. They are the seashells as well as uh, the sparkling clear circles. All are by cat scrappiness. I'm sticking the sequins down using some uh, Ranger Multimedia Matte Adhesive as well as my Crystal Katana Pickup Tool. And now let's have some fun and put the shaker page together. So first I'm filling in uh, the bottom of uh, one of the pockets with uh, the same sequence that I used for the card. That is a few seashells plus some uh, sparkly circles. Then I'm going to shake all the sequins down to the bottom of the page and I'm going to use the hot fuse tool again to seal that pocket shut. As I mentioned, if you don't have a fuse tool, you can use a sewing machine or you can hand stitch that pocket. I repeated the same process on the other pocket, but this time I just added more sequins to it. Now I'm placing my card exactly where I want it to be and using it as a guide to shut the, the pocket again. Since my card is a bit shorter than the pocket, I'm creating the two marks with the fuse tool and this way the card is not going to slide from side to side. And then I'm uh, fusing uh, this pocket shut as well. All there is left to do is to fill in uh, the top pocket with the same sequin mix and then I'm fusing that pocket as well. Those clear pages are going to be double-sided and this is exactly why I decorated both sides of the card. Now I'm going to show you really quickly how I decorated the rest of the pages. On this one I'm just going to stamp uh, this fish image from the same set and I'm using Memento Navy Blue ink. Since it's the busy pattern on the other page, I'm going to do nothing at all. On this green page, I'm going to use the Tim Holtz stencil that is called Splatters as well as Faded Jeans Distress Ink. The only reason I'm doing this is that I want to bring some of the blue to those green pages. Besides, uh, that splatter image goes uh, well uh, with the water theme. To decorate my semi-transparent pages, I'm going to use some dyes that cut out the negative image. And again, I have chosen the ones uh, with the bubbles. Those are by memory box, by the way. Since you can hardly do any writing on this type of material, I have decided to add uh, some uh, patterned paper circles to it. So I'm doing some stamping on this circle so that you can use it for journaling. Then I've die cut another circle out of navy blue that I'm going to use later. So now I'm applying some um, liquid adhesive and I'm sticking it down onto my page. I'm flipping the page over and uh, attaching the remaining circle on the other side and this one would be perfect to add uh, some embellishment or the photo. Now when I have added all the decorations uh, that I wanted, I'm ready to bind my notebook. So I'm uh, putting all the pages one inside the other just uh, as I want them to be. 
I'm also attaching some binder clips to the edges of the paper to keep them together and prevent them from uh, sliding back and forth. You can totally do the stitching along the fold if you want to, but I have decided to use my new long arm stapler. This tool is uh, relatively inexpensive and I think I'm gonna use it a lot. So I have made a couple of marks with the pencil at uh, one inch distance from the edge and then I'm using uh, this stapler just as a normal uh, short arm st stapler. There is nothing fancy about this tool, it's so, so very easy to use. I have also decided to add one more staple in the center of the notebook for some extra security. And now I can remove the binder clips. As always in this situation, you can notice that uh, the inner pages hang uh, off the edge of the cover. So you can simply use a ruler and a craft knife to um, trim down all the pages and uh, make the spine uh, really neat. Don't apply too much pressure, it's always better to run the blade several times. And now I'm going to decorate the front of my notebook. I'm going to use this uh, four ceramic tiles that I've made with uh, the stamps and dies and some chipboard. I have a tutorial for those types of tiles and uh, I'll uh, put a link down below if you want to see it. I have backed up this tile with a piece of a navy blue patterned paper from the set and now I'm adding some sentiment strips again from this set. I'm uh, attaching uh, this backed up tile onto the front of the notebook with the liquid glue and now I'm going to add more strips to finish off my composition. I initially planned to go with uh, one uh, line of uh, sentiments, but then I decided to add uh, the second shorter line to balance everything out. And uh, I, you'll see I will also add a couple of sentiments to the back side of the notebook cover. So this is what the finished notebook looks like. I'll do a quick flip through so you can see how it looks uh, on the inside. Each page of the notebook looks different and it's kind of finished all uh, by itself. And uh, by the way, in, you can add your own photo inside this pocket or create your own shaker pockets here. But uh, you know, if you don't like any of the images, you can always cover them up with your own photos or embellishments or journaling tags. And another great thing about this notebook is uh, you definitely have to be a crafter to put it together, but you absolutely don't have to be a crafter to fill in this notebook. This is why it would make such a nice little gift to pretty much anyone. And yes, I have used another paper from the same pad to create a gift envelope for this notebook. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching it till the end. Have a beautiful week and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye-bye!